This is a Necky Supernova Automatica, and when it was first purchased new in 1957, must have seemed revolutionary to the average seamstress. The Italian manufacturer Necky was one of the first, if not the first, to introduce a zigzag machine to the domestic market. This model goes one step further, with cams to produce embroidery stitches. When I saw this sad example sitting in a charity shop, I knew I had to rescue it. It was filthy after 64 years, seized and the cabinet needed some TLC. And that's just what it got. The foot pedal is separate and plugs in. It can be stored in a drawer when not in use. The machine has a power switch, which also turns on the light. The spool pins are springs, so can't easily be damaged. To wind a bobbin, release the clutch knob. I'm using cross wound thread, so I'm using my homemade thread stand. The thread goes through the front thread guide and then back again. The bobbin winder is hidden but easily clips into position. The thread goes first through the pigtail on the winder, then down to the school bell style tensioner. Pass the thread through the hole in the bobbin and mount on the bobbin winder, which also disengages automatically when the bobbin is full. Don't forget to re-engage the needle bar before starting to sew. Slide back the bobbin cover plate. Under here is a bar which releases the feed dog cover so that it can be removed or spun into the desired position. Remove the bobbin case. The bobbin goes into the case with the thread coming off in a clockwise direction. The thread is pulled under the tension spring until you hear it click into place. It clips in like many common class 15 style machines. Slide close the bobbin cover. To thread the machine, leave the thread laced in the front of the thread guide. Bring the thread down into one of the two sets of tension discs and over the check spring. Down under the thread guide hook, and then up through the slot in the top. Then up through the eye of the take up lever, and back down into the slot again. Guess who's just realised there's a slit here to help you thread it? Then down through one of the pigtails over the needle bar, and thread the needle from left to right. The two sets of tension discs and two pigtails over the needle bar is because this machine can be used with a twin needle. While holding the thread tail, turn the hand wheel towards you and pull up the bottom thread.
placed a piece of fabric under the presser foot and were ready to sew. When the speed switch is set to max, the machine's pretty fast. It's also very responsive. You can also drop the feed dogs, turn the switch on the base towards the down setting and press down. Turning it towards the straight stitch setting releases it. The needle position can be set to the right, the left or the centre. The stitch width lever can be limited or locked into place. The stitch length dial is straightforward. And there's the push button reverse function. The machine comes with a range of accessories and a selection of pattern cams. You can build your own cams using a cam boss and any three of the discs of your choosing. The instruction manual gives full details on how to build numerous pattern cams. There are also four cams pre-made, along with a buttonhole cam that looks like a chrome door handle. The accessory box lid has a dial. Select the decorative stitch you require and it displays which discs to use in which order as well as the main machine settings. The inside of the lid has more to choose from and even more are listed in the user manual. So let's try out some of the pre-built cams. The lever at the rear moves the cam followers out of the way so we can fit the cam under the flap in the top of the machine. Moving the lever back places the cam followers ready to operate. Set the machine according to the instructions and we're ready to go. Changing the setting on the pattern length dial stretches the pattern. You can see the machine automatically moves the fabric backwards as well as forwards to create the pattern. Let's try another pattern. It's hard to think that this machine is over 60 years old.
When you want to go back to normal stitching, move the cam follower lever over and lift out the cam. And put the cam follower lever back. Move the pattern length dial to the diamond mark and turn the hand wheel towards you until you hear a faint click. Then move the dial round to the triangle and we're ready to sew again. To make a buttonhole, move the cam follower lever over and place the buttonhole cam in the machine. Move the cam follower lever back. Set the stitch length close to zero and use a special clear buttonhole presser foot. Place a piece of fabric under the presser foot and starting with the buttonhole handle in the center, make a couple of bar tack stitches. Move the lever to the left and sew until you get the length of the buttonhole you require. Move the lever back to the middle and do five or six bar tack stitches. Then move the lever to the right to stitch back up to the top of the buttonhole. Move the lever back to the middle and finish off with a couple of bar tack stitches. It takes a little practice, but it is quite easy. I love how these drawers have curved bottoms, no loose pins getting stuck in the corners. There's still a little fine tuning needed to get this supernova sewing just right, but I'm pretty pleased with it so far. I hope you've enjoyed this video, if you have please give it a like, and if you haven't already please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of all my future uploads. Thanks for watching.